So I'm here with Timothy Greenfield Sanders, who has a documentary called About Face in Sundance. Um, and it's going to be on HBO this in summer. The summer? Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's all about uh, sort of gay icons, well, some of them, uh, some very famous models. And can you tell us about those models? Yeah, the film's uh, about uh, beauty through mm-hmm. the eyes of supermodels from the 1950s to the 1980s, from Carmen, Marissa Berenson, Isabella Rossellini, and mm-hmm. Jerry Hall, and Christy Brinkley, and Christy mm-hmm. Turlington, and Cheryl Teagues, and mm-hmm. uh, on and on, and cameos with Eileen Ford from the modeling agency, mm-hmm. and Calvin Klein. It's an, an exploration of beauty through their eyes, but also it's about race, and drugs, and AIDS, and confidence, and all the things that are part of that world. Mm-hmm. And how do you think gay men have sort of been instrumental in shaping beauty ideals for the past, you know, 40, 50, 60 years? Well, I think, you know, I'm not a historian, but I think if you look at the fashion world, it's a place where I think gay people felt comfortable or at least accepted, mm-hmm. uh, particularly back in the old days when you could be arrested for being gay. Mm-hmm. So... I think that became a, a haven, and, mm-hmm. and and also you know a place of creativity, and uh, so I think the, there's a strong connection between gay gay world and these women as well. Mm-hmm. I, and I, I actually, when I made the film, I said I was looking at it almost finished. I thought you know my audience is going to be gay men <laughs> and, and women. <laughs> And what's been surprising is that straight men have liked the film as well. Right. Because I think they have, these women are beautiful, mm-hmm. and I think they all kind of grew up knowing them, particularly with Sports Illustrated, when Sports Illustrated yep. became a magazine that highlighted these gorgeous women. The bikini issue. Exactly, the swimsuit issue. Um, and that's kind of funny because when you think about the construction of these images, you might assume that, you know, they're being created to titillate men. Uh, in a lot of cases, I guess they're being created to sell clothes to women. So, um, but then when you have gay men, you know they're not interested in, in um, the women's bodies. The women's bodies, right. and they're not going to buy the clothes unless they're a drag queen. Um, <laughs> which God knows we have some of those. Um, but what's it's? I don't. Sometimes I don't get the fascination, you know, with with models. Um, I think it's about beauty. Right. I think that these are ideals of beauty Mm -hmm. and that you look at these women and um, these are these kind of perfect forms of of women. And, Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I mean, I'm not an expert, but I think gay men have been such an important part of that world in terms of the hair and the makeup Mm -hmm. artists. And even in our film, Harry King, who's legendary hairstylist from mm-hmm. the 70s and 80s and who did hundreds of covers of Vogue and Cosmo right? and is, you know, has a cameo in the film um, his influence and he worked with Way Bandy and people like that so mm-hmm. th- those people really formed uh, the, the look of, fa- of, of hair, makeup and fashion for, mm-hmm. for the magazines which really influenced everyone mm-hmm. and did you grow up in a conservative household or was like no. working alongside gay people just sort no, of I, very easy I grew up in a very liberal household where my mm-hmm. parents were civil rights activists and I grew up with mm-hmm. a real sense of tolerance and understanding and then my previous films, The Blacklist, The Latino mm-hmm. List, um, our films about identity and race and achievement mm-hmm. and you know this film, you know this film came about because I went, do you know the story of how it happened this film? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, you don't. <laughs> um, well, let's two hear years, it. Two years ago, um, Harry King was giving a party in New York. And who was Harry King exactly? Harry King is this is what legendary hair. Okay, yeah, you just said that. Uh, hairstylist, mm-hmm. um, and he was giving a party for his Facebook friends, and I was <laughs> and I was told I've got to come, I've got to go for five minutes. So I literally double parked my car on Seventh Avenue in New mm-hmm. York, and I ran into the party, and it was all these gorgeous women who were his friends from those days, mm-hmm. all supermodels, and I looked around and. The room smelled like Charlie. That was a perfume in those days. <laughs> and it had that kind of feel. 
And the next day, I, you know, I called Vanity Fair and I said, mm -hmm. think about a group portrait of these of 12 great supermodels from that mm -hmm. period, from the 70s and 80s. And they said, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, Vanity Fair loves the retro stuff, right? Yeah. So. And so that became the seed for this film. And once mm -hmm. I started to meet them and film them, I thought, it's got to be even more expensive. It needs to go mm -hmm. to the 60s and the 50s. Because these women are still around, we need to get them now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we just lost Elizabeth Taylor, so... Um, I went to the Elizabeth Taylor show in New York, the auction. The auction? Oh, my God. Uh, incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Did you bid on anything? <laughs> well, I don't wear those kind of clothes. But, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, as a gift for somebody. I would have, I would have gotten some for my wife, but right. they, the prices were crazy. Yeah. I heard. I heard they just was so shattered records. It was like they had... Uh, her taste was kind of from really vulgar to really quite, quite refined. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a, an incredible look back into fashion history. Mm -hmm. By vulgar, do you mean like just incredibly gaudy and, yeah. uh, you bad know. Bad colors, bad stuff. <laughs> As a photographer, I'm sure you would know. Yeah, um, and can you tell me a little bit about Calvin Klein's involvement with the yeah, film? Calvin's a very old friend of mine for years. And mm -hmm. I photographed him. Uh, you know, I'm a photographer originally, but I've been making films for years now. Mm -hmm. And... I asked him early on, I said, I'm doing a film about this, these women, I know you know them all, Did right. you come in for an interview, and he did, and he was so insightful and smart and mm -hmm. cool, and, and, you know, he, he was pivotal in kind of the change from, uh, in the old days, runway was one thing, and editorial was another, and they mm -hmm. never, ever combined it. Yeah, I think I talked to Brooke Shields about this once, and she said, oh, she was never runway. And was people, kind of down on it, yeah. right, and I think we even used a quote. She said, oh, I've never been skinny. And we were just like, well, runway, I guess runway was supposed to be the, the really skinny, or was that it the well, other way? models could, could wore the clothes. Okay. And, and, and knew how to walk in them. Mm -hmm. And then the editorial were more the kind of faces. It was more okay. about these beautiful faces that sold the cover. Mm -hmm. And Calvin was the first to understand that those faces were famous. So people uh -huh. were on the runway, whether they fit the clothes perfectly or not, it didn't uh -huh. matter. They were, they were going to get press. Uh -huh. So he was very brilliant about that. It's not in my film, but it was something he, I thought was so interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and he talked about Brooke Shields in the film. Oh, yeah? And about how the model... We, we were, I don't want to ruin the film for people. <laughs> There's a discussion of kind of the older... The, the, the models were women. They weren't children. They weren't girls like uh -huh. Brooke and how that went from kind of a, a, a woman as a model to a 15-year-old. Mm -hmm. And that was Brooke Shields and that was the Calvin Klein ads that he did, the t famous television ads. Mm -hmm. um, and do you think that sort of... Um the shift of models towards... Do you think that it, culturally mainstream it used to be more appreciation of an older female's body and now it's sort of the younger, almost, you know, coming-of-age, sort of pubescent female? Or I think if you if you watch the film, you'll see that in the, in the early days... And Isabella, um, Isabella Rossellini talks about this, that, the, uh -huh. that the, the role model was a kind of olderish woman. You wanted to be a, a mature woman. Mm -hmm. That was what it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then it got more into younger and younger and younger and sexier and newer mm -hmm. and less, you know, less, fewer clothes and more nudity. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of the trend. And it became about selling the clothes through sex. Mm -hmm. Which is funny, you know, you see these Abercrombie ads and they're not wearing clothes. Exactly. Um, it's more about an image. It's a lifestyle. A lifestyle, and, and right. Originally it was about, you'd look at the clothes, you wanted to see how the buttons were done. Mm -hmm. look, the a little colors, more technical. Colors. It was all about craft and mm -hmm. beauty. And then it became about sex and selling. Okay. Is there a, mi a middle ground? or? Um... Oh, I'm not putting a judgment. <laughs> I don't care. You yeah, know, I think there's no, there's no stopping this 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 society of ours. It's going to get even more frivolous and more <laughs> um, pop culture as we continue. I mean, it was Andy Warhol's the one who kind of started it all. Mm -hmm. Do you think celebrity has gotten a little absurd over the years? A, a little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yes. I mean, because yeah. every magazine now it's. You know, let's put a celebrity well, that's, that's on the a, cover. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, one of the most interesting things that happened here at the, at the festival mm -hmm. is I went around 
to you go to photo shoots with your stars, and I had Carol Alt, mm -hmm. Chita Machado, and Beverly Johnson. So I was walking around Sundance with these gorgeous models, right? And we would go to these fashion shoots like Getty and Corbis and uh -huh. Entertainment Weekly and all these to be photographed. And the photographers were just stunned by having a model who knew how to pose and knew what to do. <laughs> because what they're used to now is actors who don't know how to pose right. in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these young, beautiful actors, they're pretty, but they can't emote. They, mm -hmm. they don't know how to pose. They don't know right. how to stand. So if all the photographers were saying to me, my God, this is so <laughs> exciting for us because we're actually shooting someone that knows what to do. Right. Wow. But, but today it's all about a famous person on the cover. It's not about a beautiful person. Mm -hmm. And I feel like as a journalist too, it's kind of like when I attend these red carpets and events, it's like, oh, well, what's the most famous person we can grab? Because right. Right. even if they don't say something that interesting, well, we can still use it more so, easily. So it's your It's, your fault. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's, is it the lazy press? Or I think it's the culture. Um, Sure. I mean, and, and what's even worse is it's now not even, it's not even about achievement anymore. It's about reality shows. It's right. About people who, who are famous for, be, for doing nothing except screaming and breaking mm -hmm. tables and being vulgar. <laughs> so it's, it's really now uh, gone from people who were talented and respected and, and written about because they did something right. to people who are vulgarians. Famous for being famous, famous for they being say. <laughs> And Paris Hilton is here um, at Sundance. You run into her at all? I know Paris, and, and I think Paris is is, um, is classy compared to uh, you know the rest of them. The rest being like a Kardashian, or yeah, of course. Well, some people say that Paris Hilton paved the way for the Kardashian Absolutely. clan, and I mean they were friends back in the day, and yeah. I don't know if they still are, but. You know, it's about money, and there's a lot of money in this, and people it's true. understand that there's a way to brand themselves. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't think I would be proud of branding myself the way these people do. Mm -hmm. It's not who I am, but right. if they, I, I, you could make a dime off it. Want to, if they want to make a dime off it, okay. I guess that's how our culture has become debased. Mm -hmm. And I guess just last question, why, why should gay people, why do they need to see your film? <laughs> this film is, um, you know, About Face is, is about very strong women, and you don't mm -hmm. have to be straight or gay to appreciate strong women. Mm -hmm. I think it's a film about amazing, iconic figures in our culture. Mm -hmm. Isabella Rossellini, you can love her whether you're straight or gay, or Jerry Hall, mm -hmm. you know, um, Marissa Berenson. I mean, these are all incredible people. Mm -hmm. So I think... Uh, if you're gay, you probably might like them more. In some <laughs> sense, but um, you know, all right. I think it's a great film. All right. Thank you so much, Timothy. Pleasure.